So I'm guessing you all have one of these, right? And as users, we pretty much are concerned whether it turns on, syncs to Wi-Fi, and still has battery life left after a few hours. As users, we don't have to think on a daily basis about quantum physics that might be at play inside our device or how that could be used to improve devices of the future. Indeed, in the last 40 years, we've seen impressive advances in our electronic devices. But in certain components, like the display and the battery, if we go down to the level of atoms, there are still things we do not understand. And in order to move beyond trial and error-based engineering to systematically optimize devices of the future, we need to understand what is going on inside. This is what my research group focuses on, looking at the physics behind these technologies. So the challenge here, but also the opportunity, is that materials in today's technologies are often very, very small. For example, color in your LED TV displays comes from small clusters of atoms or chunks of semiconductor that range in size from just tens to hundreds of atoms. And at these uh, nano length scales, quantum physics takes over. An electron is no longer free to spread out and move where it wants, but it dances around these nanoparticles. And in fact, the surroundings of the nanoparticle become just as important, in fact, as the material itself. We perform experiments at large-scale facilities around the world to understand these new regimes of physics and also perform computations at supercomputing clusters that would have taken decades to complete just a few years ago. And with this new knowledge, we and other research groups around the world are beginning to be able to design nanoparticles for a range of applications, including electronics, medicine, um, and energy generation and storage. So here, what you see, for example, is um, nanoparticles targeting cancer tumor and destroying it. So let me give you another example. If you make some materials smaller than 50 nanometers in diameter, they become super paramagnetic, which means they interact strongly with permanent magnets. And we've used these sorts of materials to improve lithium ion battery technology. So indeed, batteries are one area where trial and error engineering has driven the improvements we've seen in the last 25 years. And in part, this is due to the fact that batteries are like black boxes. This is why my research group has developed x-ray-based techniques to look inside batteries as they operate, so we can see what the problems are and which solutions work. So here you see a sub-volume of a battery uh, image with our x-ray-based approach, and these flakes that you see, like particles, are graphite, which is used in 95% of lithium-ion batteries today. When you charge your battery, you're inserting lithium into these graphite flakes and they expand, and when you discharge your battery, lithium leaves the graphite particles and they contract. And manufacturers like graphite because, in addition to being low cost, it can withstand this immense mechanical strain every time you charge and discharge your cell. So what we figured out with our x-ray-based approach is that actually it's this flake-like shape of graphite that makes for a long and complicated path along which your lithium atoms have to travel. And this is what limits how fast you can charge your battery. A startup company out of my group is actually commercializing now a technique where we can use these super paramagnetic nanoparticles I mentioned before to actually align the graphite flakes during the battery manufacturing so we have these direct paths for lithium transport within batteries. With this, manufacturers can stick with graphite as an inexpensive material but give you a cell that charges faster all while not sacrificing energy density or battery life. I hope I've convinced you that quantum physics has moved far beyond blackboards and scribbles of paper. It's in some of our technologies today and will enable us to engineer a society far beyond what we can dream of now. Thank you very much. We hope you have enjoyed this video and for more videos go to freakphysics.com.